With MLOps 2 come a bunch of new features, amongst which is the SAM model, the Segment Anything model. It's been developed by Meta, and we can now simply use it by importing an image using the image to points node, and I will just point it to this image of this capybara and just make sure the width and height are set correctly, like this. And now I'll just drop down the SAM node, which is the Segment Anything model, and I can just wire this image in here and then let SAM do its work, which after a while will spit out this, an automatically segmented image in here. However, if you only want to select a certain area of the image, say the capybara only, we can do so by adding a few points. So in here I'll use the add node, add one point and make sure I have the tool handle selected and move that point onto the capybara. So the point is now sitting here and that goes into the SAM model's second input. So now it's only selecting the first half of the capybara and if I wanted to add the backside of it, I'll just add another point in here like this and making sure I move this to the capybara's backside like this. Let's have a look. And yes, my capybara is now selected. So that is automatic or semi-automatic selection and segmentation using SAM. Now, if you don't want to be bothered with setting points of what you want to mask out and just want to remove the background in an image, we've got you covered too, because MLOps now implements the RemBG model, which as the name implies, removes the background of an image. So I've got my capybara coming in here and just plop it in the RemBG and switch the view flag on that. And after a bit of calculation, we are greeted with this, the background of this capybara removed. And I can switch if I want the alpha mask displayed here as an alpha attribute, or if I just want to have the background in a plain color like this maybe. And also I can enable alpha matting here, which gives you the usual threshold sliders to generate a mat and adjust it similarly to what a mat choker does in a more traditional post pipeline. We also have a bunch of analysis tools, out of which, in my opinion, the dimensionality reduction is the most interesting one. And that is using UMAP to cluster where in the latent space images or data lives. In this case, I've built this quite horrendous setup here, which does nothing more than blend between a bunch of prompts, namely prompting for a parrot, a rabbit, a pizza, and then a parrot again. And all we do in this loop here is generate 48 images, whose latents we then feed in our reduced dimensionality node. And this node just outputs a bunch of points which are clustered in three-dimensional space. So if I move the camera around here, I can see it clustered those points depending on their latents. Now with the visualized dimensionality reduction node, what I can do is feed in a bunch of latents which do have a class written on them for each individual image. And then I can copy and decode those latents onto the points so that they show up their actual images. And you can see also this thing orients those images towards the camera. And now you can see that indeed, I visualized my prompt blending by blending from a parrot here to a pizza, to a rabbit, and then back to the parrots. And you can use the dimensionality reduction here, not only to visualize, in this case, conditional embeddings, but all sorts of multidimensional data. So if you have any other sort of data, maybe from chemistry, from physics, or from maybe biomedical imaging, you can use this node to visualize highly dimensional data in three or even in two dimensions. Within the analysis tools, we also have tools to compare different sets of data and measure how similar they are. For example, measuring how similar images are to each other. So in this case, I've got three images, photo of myself, another photo of myself, and this abstract painting. So in our MLOps analysis tab, we find the measure image similarity node, which takes in two different images. So let's just compare myself to this oil painting here. Remember oil painting here, this is myself. And then when I measure their similarity, I get out one single point that has this similarity score of 0.03. And that uses a measure called SSIM, which measures the structural similarity of an image. However, sometimes this is not the best way to gauge if an image is similar to each other or not. Sometimes instead of their structure, you want to measure the similarity of their image embeddings. That means the similarity of where in the latent space those images live, which we can do by switching the image similarity from SSIM to clip embeddings. Don't be alerted by this warning. That is just a warning, nothing more. So we can clear and ignore it. And after a bit, we also have the similarity score here, which is 0.45. Okay, let's try measuring an image of myself versus an image of myself. Again, this time using clip, and this is a similarity of 0.75, not bad. Let's try SSIM again. Similarity of 0.06. So that's the measure image similarity node. In a similar manner, we are able to measure the similarity of two different prompts. In this case, I prompted for a photo of a cute capybara and just duplicated this prompt and then respectively wired it into the tokenizer and the text encoder. And down here, we can add from the MLOps analysis, the measure prompt similarity and measure the similarity between those two prompts, which should now prompt for the very same thing. So when I highlight this node here to the geo spreadsheet, I can see their similarity score is one because they're identical. So instead, 
of this image of a cute capybara. Let's prompt for something absolutely different, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. And now if we measure their similarity, we can see that their score is way lower. So that note just simply gives you a similarity measure between prompts. Here's an image of yours truly again, this time demonstrating the MLOps text tools. We've got the blip caption and the clip interrogate. So let's see how they work by dropping each down like this. So first let's try the clip interrogate, wiring in the image in here, then highlighting that node. And after a bit of noodling around, we get back one single point. And if we look at it on the geo spreadsheet, in this case, a smiling man sitting at a table with a plate of food, and then it just keeps going on. The downside of this is it's a bit slow to calculate, but fret not. There is an alternative to it, so back to our scene viewer, and let's wire this into the blip caption and then highlight this node in here. So blip caption is a good bit faster. Let's have a look at its output. We can see a man sitting at the table with a plate of food. So in this case, rather similar. Also, what we can do with the blip caption is we can feed it a conditional prompt. So if we use a prompt create and start typing, for example, a picture of a guy, and then wire this into our blip caption like this, and then letting it recalculate, we can see it spits out a picture of a guy in a black t-shirt. So we can use that to autocomplete our input by using an image. And that is blip caption and clip interrogate. In the MLOps utility category, we've got quite a bunch of interesting nodes. Let's start out with the camera to points node. So as you've seen, I've created a bunch of geometry here, two test geos and a camera on my OBJ level here. So the camera and those two test geometries. And within my camera to points, I can select both my camera here, as well as the objects to render. In this case, I select anything that's in this scene. And then let me just split my window here side by side and use one from the top and just recenter this so we can see the whole image and maybe hit D and make sure under the geometry we switch our display particles as pixels so this displays properly and you can see now let's just lock the camera here to the viewport and now we get the camera around you can see that now updates in real time ish with a OpenGL rendering of our viewport not only that we can also select a bunch of objects that we do want to render or that we don't want to render for example let's just render only the pig head like this or let's just render only the rubber toy and just delete the pig head here like this or render everything. Also, we can use the camera resolution. So let's not have this be 512 by 512, but 720p like so, so that works too. And let's output an info pass such as the segmentation, which in this case automatically segments the image by connectivity, but you can also segment by piece attributes or material paths. So in this case, the material path would be different on our objects. So they would segment into two different masks. Also, I can display a normal as well as a depth pass. So that is your camera to points, a quote unquote real time ish render engine for your viewport. Remember when I talked about UMAP and dimensionality reduction, what if you don't have any embeddings or image latents, but you still want to visualize where in the latents an image lives? Can we generate those embeddings or those latents from an image? And with the newest release of MLOps, we can using the MLOps create clip image embedding node. So that takes an image as an input, wired in here, highlight it and wait a bit. And then we can see when we middle mouse on this, we now have 512 points containing an image embedding attribute. So a vector with 512 components storing where in the embedding space of clip this image would live. So if you wanted to visualize embeddings of images for which you don't have any other data, you can use this node here to create image embeddings after the fact. Let's assume you just created this image using SD or any other method and its resolution in this case of 512 by 512 is a bit too low for what you have in mind. With our MLOps real ESR GAN upres, we can create a higher resolution version of this image. In this case, by default, it's set to four times the original resolution. So let's wire in our image and wait a bit. And after a bit of calculation, I am greeted with that, a four times uprest version of the original image now measuring in at 2K by 2K. And while not perfect, it's really astounding what kind of detail ESR GAN can generate out of a rather low res image. And to me, it's surprising how well this works across all different kinds of images, not only paintings, but photography, but also CG. So ESR GAN to upscale your images. In the more traditional use cases of MLOps, namely the stable diffusion category, we've added two main things. One is the instruct pix to pix node, which now is not a convoluted Python node anymore, but a neat HDA, which hides away the convolution in Python. And this thing as an input takes an image again. For now, let's go with this well-known person, goes into the first image, and then it takes in a prompt. So let's use a prompt create, and let's prompt an instruction. For example, give him a mustache and then wire this in the second slot in here and highlight the instruct pix to pix node and wait a bit. And here you have it, yours truly, a bit wonky and with a mustache. And in here, of course, I could tweak my usual settings, the image guidance scales, so how 
strongly this should adhere to the original image or the CFG scale, meaning how strongly it should adhere to the prompt. So that is instruct picks to picks. Also, if you just want to use stable diffusion in an extremely simple and monolithic way, we've got you covered with our new MLOps stable diffusion pipeline here, which is a single node containing all features that you need to create or infer an image using stable diffusion within Houdini. So in here, I've got my settings, which model to use, which compute device with height and the seed. But also in here, I can create the prompts, positive and negative prompts, set up schedulers, dial in my solver, and even set up a guide image and a mask. So in this case, let's prompt for a high quality detailed and professional image of a giraffe and let it do its thing. And here we are, a shy giraffe hiding. And if I don't like that, let's just dial in the seed a bit and again, recalculate and so on and so on. So that is the SD pipeline, just encapsulating the usual stable diffusion tree that you'd build yourself using a bunch of nodes. And just as a teaser, as Paul is going to cover this in detail, in TOPS, we also have a bunch of MLOps nodes, namely the dataset create and two training nodes. One to train pix to pix hd and the other one to train Stable Diffusion using Dreambooth or Dreambooth and LoRa. But again, that's for Paul to cover. Summing up, not only did we implement a few new techniques, a bunch of analysis tools, and a bunch of utilities into this release of MLOps, we also did some bug fixing, implemented some of your RFEs, improved some of the management of the models you downloaded, and also make your life easier when you try scripting using diffusers, which now makes it extremely easy to implement your own custom pipelines. Just have a look at what's happening inside the pix to pix node. However, the caveat of this is, the chances of this update breaking your existing setups is very high. However, in our opinion, it's worth upgrading. Just keep in mind that it might break or definitely will break some older setups. And when you're installing, please adhere to Paul's installation instructions. Otherwise, you might end up with a non-working installation. And with that, I hope you're having fun with this toolkit. And if you want to give us feedback or participate in the development of MLOps, just visit our GitHub page, on which you'll also find a link to our MLOps Discord server, where you can find help, like-minded people, and also communicate what you'd like to see within MLOps and where you think this thing should go. Hope to see you there. Goodbye.